Chapter 17 The Rendezvous And howled and roared beneath the undergrowth with a thousand voices, twisting branches, swelling up clouds of leaves and vines, bending and tattling the trees as they struggled to hold their ground. From time to time lightning shuttered the darkness, occasionally setting fire to one of the giants of the forest. It was a perfect night for an attack. Unfortunately, Sanakan's men had still not arrived. Despite the hurricane's violence, the two pirates were not deterred. Their path lit by the odd flashes of lightning, they attempted to make their way towards the stream, hoping to find their Prahu sheltering in the bay. Ignoring the torrential rain, and carefully weaving through the shower of leaves and branches, in less than two hours the two men unexpectedly arrived near the mouth of the stream, completing the trip in half the time it had taken to get to the villa. We did a better job of finding our way in the dark than we did in broad daylight, said Yanez. A stroke of luck with such a night. Sanakam walked down the bank of the stream, waited for a flash of lightning, and quickly scanned the waters. Not a trace of them, he said dully. I doubt they've left their shelters yet, replied the Portuguese. They probably realized another hurricane was approaching and decided not to set sail. I have a bad feeling about this, Yanez. I'm almost sure they sank. Bah! I wouldn't give up on them just yet. Our ships are solid. They'll be here in a couple of days. You told them to meet us in this bay, right? Yes, Yanez. They'll come. Let's find some shelter, Sanukan. It's raining buckets, and this hurricane isn't going to subside any time soon. Where to go? Hmm. There's the hut Jira Batol used during his stay on the island, but I don't think I'd be able to find it. Let's head into that banana grove. Those giant leaves should provide us with adequate shelter. Better yet, let's build an atap, Yanez. Good idea. We'll have one up in a few minutes. They drew their crisses, cut down a few bamboo trees from along the banks of the stream, and planted them beneath a superb pombo, its thick leaves helping to shelter them from the rain. They set up the poles like a tent frame, then covered them with giant banana leaves, laying down enough layers to keep the water out. As Yanez had predicted, a few minutes had sufficed to build the shelter. The two pirates got beneath it, taking a bunch of bananas with them, and after a meagre dinner, attempted to fall asleep. The hurricane began to intensify, thunder and lightning adding their deafening roars to the howls of the wind. Several times, Yanez and Sandokan were forced to get up and add another layer of banana leaves to the roof to shelter themselves from the heavy rain. Towards dawn, however, the storm began to break, allowing the two pirates to finally get some sleep. Let's look for breakfast, said Yanez when he awoke. With any luck, I'll be able to find a couple of oysters. The Portuguese headed towards the bay, following the southern shore. Looking through the many reefs, he managed to find several dozen giant oysters and a few crustaceans. He then added a few bananas, a few pombos, and a couple of large oranges. After having consumed their breakfast, the two men followed the coast northward in hope of sighting one of the Prahus, but unfortunately the water was clear to the horizon. The storm must have prevented them from setting sail, said Yanis. The wind has been blowing constantly since noon. I'm a little worried about them, my friend, replied the Tiger of Malaysia. They're long overdue, and I'm beginning to fear the worst. Bah! Our men are all capable sailors. They walked around the shore for most of the day, then around sunset headed into the forest and began to make their way towards Lord James's villa. Do you think Mariana has found our note? asked Yanis. I'm sure of it, replied the Tiger. Then she'll come to the rendezvous, if she's able. What do you mean, Sandokan? Lord James may be keeping a strict eye on her. The devil! We're going regardless, Yanis. I'm going to see her. I can feel it in my heart. As long as you don't do anything rash, there's bound to be a good number of soldiers guarding the villa. I know. Let's try not to draw their attention. I'll act calmly, rationally. Promise? Yes. Then let's go. Proceeding slowly, cautiously, ears straining to pick up the slightest sound, 
eyes scanning the branches for signs of an ambush. They arrived in the vicinity of the garden shortly before seven. A few minutes of sunlight still remained, enough to enable them to scout the villa's surroundings. Having ensured that no soldier lay hidden among the brushwood, they approached the wall, helped each other up it, and dropped to the other side. The flower beds had been devastated by the hurricane, but the two men quickly made their way through them and hid among a clump of Chinese peonies. From there, they could comfortably observe the goings-on in the park and villa, few trees blocking their view. There's an officer at one of the windows, said Sanokan, and a lookout standing guard near the corner of the pavilion, said Yanez. He'll pose a problem if he's still there after nightfall. We'll break his neck, Sandakan replied resolutely. It'd be better to take him by surprise, than bind and gag him. Do you have any rope? I have my sash. Great, and... The wretches! What, Yanez? They've put metal bars on all the windows. May Allah take them, hissed Sandokan, barely stifling his anger. Little brother, Lord James must be well acquainted with the tiger of Malaysia's cunning. My God, what precautions! The Mariana will probably be guarded, of course, Sandokan, and won't be able to keep our appointment. It's quite likely, but I'll see her anyway, Yanez. I'll climb to the window. You were right to expect this. Good thing you wrote to her to get a rope. And if the soldiers surprise us, we'll fight. The two of us? You know they're afraid of us. Well, that's true, but... And we fight like ten men. Yes, when it isn't raining bullets. Hey, look, Sandokan. What? A group of soldiers leaving the villa, replied the Portuguese, pulling himself up onto the large roots of a nearby pombo to get a better look. Where are they going? They're leaving the garden. To patrol the forest? It appears so. Better for us. Yes, maybe. We'll wait for midnight. He cautiously lit a cigarette and lay down beside Sandokan smoking as serenely as if he were on the bridge of his prahu. Sandokan, however, was racked with impatience, and could not relax for an instant. He got up from time to time and probed the darkness, trying to make out what was happening in the villa, and attempted to catch a glimpse of the young woman. His suspicions began to mount, and he began to believe that perhaps a trap had been set for him near the villa. The note could easily have been found by someone and brought to Lord James. Unable to control himself, he repeatedly peppered Yanez with questions, but his friend simply continued to smoke in silence. Midnight finally arrived. Despite the risk of being caught by Lord James's soldiers, Sandokan sprang to his feet, ready to run to the villa. Yanez, however, had also jumped up and grabbed him by the arm. Wait, little brother, he said. You promised you'd be careful. I'm not afraid of anyone, said Sandokan. I'm ready for anything. Your nerves are getting the better of you, my friend. You've already forgotten the guard near the pavilion. We'll kill him. We have to make sure he doesn't sound the alarm. I'll strangle him. They left the clump of peones and crept through the flower beds, hiding behind the bushes and the numerous Chinese roses. They were about a hundred paces from the villa when Yanez gestured for Sandokan to stop. Can you see the soldier? he asked. Yes. I think he's fallen asleep, leaning on his rifle. All the better, Yanez. Come on, then, and I'll be ready for anything. I have a handkerchief ready to gag him. I've drawn my Chris. If he cries out, I'll kill him. They snuck into a flower bed that stretched toward the garden, toward the gazebo, and slithering like two serpents, got to within a few steps of the soldier. That poor young man, certain of an uneventful night, had leaned against one of the gazebo's walls and fallen asleep, still clutching his rifle. Ready, Yanez? whispered Sanokan. Ready. Sanokan leapt like a tiger and pounced upon the young soldier, grabbing him by the throat and dragging him to the ground with irresistible force. Yanez had also moved. With a quick hand he gagged the prisoner, bound his arms and legs, then drew his chris and whispered menacingly, Careful, my friend. Make a move and it'll be your last. He turned towards Sandokan and added, Now to find Mariana. Where's her window? It's that one, exclaimed the pirate, his eyes already fixed upon it. Over that arbor. Ah, Mariana. 
Be patient, little brother, and if all goes well, you'll see her. But they've barred her windows with metal grating. Bah! A small inconvenience. He picked up a handful of stones and tossed one at the window. It made a light sound as it struck against the glass. The pirates waited excitedly, holding their breath, but no one replied. Yanez threw a second stone, a third, then a fourth. Suddenly the window opened and Sandokan spotted a white figure in the moonlight. A smile spread across his face. Mariana! he whispered, waving toward the young woman peering through the metal bars. Despite all his strength, he swayed as if he had just received a bullet in the chest. At the sight of the pirate, a soft cry erupted from the young lady's lips. Quickly, Sandokan, said Yanez, gallantly saluting the young woman. Get to the window. There's no time to waste. The pirate raced toward the villa, climbed up the arbor, and grabbed the bars covering the window. You're back! You're back! exclaimed the young woman, mad with joy. Great God! Mariana, my darling, he murmured, showering her hands with kisses. How I've longed to see you again. You're mine? Still mine? Yes, yours, Sandokan. Forever, replied the young woman. I thought they'd killed you. I mourned your death. I can't believe you're here before me. You thought I was dead? Yes, my love, and I suffered terribly, immensely, thinking I'd lost you forever. No, sweet Mariana, it would take more than a few soldiers to kill the tiger of Malaysia. I escaped without a scratch. I crossed the sea, rallied my tigers, and came back at the head of a hundred men, ready to do whatever it takes to free you. Sandokan. Listen now, Pearl of Labuan, replied the pirate. Is his lordship here? Yes, he's holding me prisoner, fearing your return. I saw some soldiers. There are a good number of them in the rooms below, guarding us day and night. I'm surrounded on all sides, imprisoned between bayonets and iron bars. I can't even set foot outdoors. My very friend, I fear I'll never be able to come your wife. My uncle hates me now. He'll never allow the Tiger of Malaysia to wed his niece. He'll try to keep us apart, even put an ocean between the two of us if need be. Two tears, like two pearls, fell from her eyes. You're crying, Sanukan exclaimed, pained by the sight of those tears. My love, please stop, or I'll go mad and commit who knows what act of folly. Listen, Mariana, I only have a few men with me now, but by tomorrow or the day after there will be many, and you know what they can do. However his lordship tries to barricade the villa, we'll enter, even if we have to set fire to it, or smash down its walls. I am the tiger. For you I take arms against your uncle's villa and all of Labuan. Do you want me to take you away tonight? There are only two of us, but if you wish we'll smash through these bars and carry you off, even if we have to sacrifice our lives to obtain your freedom. Speak, Mariana, speak. My love for you is turning me mad and filling me with enough strength to tear down this villa with my bare hands. No, no, she exclaimed. No, my brave one, with you dead, what would happen to me? Do you think I could live without you? I have faith in you. Yes, you'll free me, but only after your men have arrived. Promise me you won't attack until you are assured of victory. A soft whistle sounded from the base of the arbor. Mariana started. Did you hear that? she asked. Yes, replied Sandokan. It's Yanez getting impatient. There could be danger, Sandokan. There may be trouble lurking in the shadows of my brave friend. Good Lord, it's time for you to leave me once more. Mariana! What if we never see each other again? Do not say that, my love. I'll find you wherever they take you. It's only a matter of hours. By tomorrow, perhaps, my men will have arrived and will come back and tear these walls that imprison you. Portuguese whistled again. Go, my noble friend, said Mariana. You are taking too great a risk. I fear no one. Let them come. Go, Sandokan, can I beg you? Go before they surprise you. Leave you? I can't turn myself away. Why didn't I lead my men here? I could have made a surprise attack and carried you off with me. Run, Sandokan, can I hear footsteps in the hallway. Mariana! In that instant, a ferocious cry thundered across the room. Wretch! roared a voice. His lordship, having seen the pirate, grabbed Mariana by the shoulder and attempted to pull her away from the window. Almost simultaneously, the two pirates heard the clack of latch poles being drawn back behind the front door. Run! yelled Yanez. 
Run, Sandokan, repeated Mariana.